This is Rohan Nayak, graduate student at the University of Florida, and this presentation is about the course project for wireless communications. And the topic of my project is performance characterization and improvements in wireless communication link using OFDM MIMO model. So before I get started on what exactly is OFDM MIMO, I would like to discuss a bit about why OFDM MIMO and why I chose to work upon this topic. So as we know that OFDM MIMO is the technology that is powering the current LTE and LTE advanced technologies and with further improvements L OFDM MIMO is well poised to also shape up the future technologies for 5G millimeter wave and uh, wide area IoT. So as we can see in this data how on the left side of the graph we can see how the mobile data has increased in the past decade and all of this data is on is transferring more and more to the wireless networks because we are shifting from desktops and computers to mobiles and uh, laptops and tablets so we need more and more of a core technology that can support higher data rates and higher throughputs and higher quality of service that can sustain and give good performance for a long time the second graph that we see here is the is a graph from Cisco which shows that the wireless data traffic by 2021 would be as high as 49 exabytes per month. So we really need some concrete technology that could power these sort of demands. These are again some news flashes that state the same data and show how OFDM MIMO is uh, poised to shape up the technology. So moving on to the agenda, I would first like to discuss a bit about the OFDM MIMO systems and what they are, how they function. Then I would like to discuss a good bit on how OFDM MIMO schematic model works. The schematic model will also give a good idea of how the simulation model for the same works. Then I would show some simulation results for the OFDM MIMO schematic and uh, discuss a little on the space-time block codes, how they improve the OFDM MIMO performance, the simulation results again for the space-time block codes, and in the end, I will discuss about a few trending technologies in OFDM MIMO. So beginning with MIMO, multiple input, multiple output, I would define it as a sophisticated technique to configure multiple arrays of antenna to enhance transmission quality. How do we do it? So a MIMO is basically a set, uh, an, array, an array of multiple antennas at the transmission and the receiving side and they create different physical channels for transmission between each antenna and receiver pair. It is a part of the 4G and another IEEE 802 standards. It transmits multiple streams of information in parallel. We'll see how it does that. And the use cases are, it has got some interesting use cases like diversity coding and spatial multiplexing where we can send either the same data or different data over s several channels because as we see as we just saw that MIMO creates different physical fading channels we can send the same data and increase the reliability or send different data and increase the throughput of the system mathematically MIMO can be represented as R equals to HT where R is the receiving antenna matrix and T is the sending antenna matrix and how we denote this mathematically here is that the the signal the channel from antenna 1 to receiver 1 would be termed as 1 1 from antenna 1 to the receiver 2 would be termed as 2 1 so on and so forth moving on to OFDM OFDM is a orthogonal frequency division multiplexing and it basically creates several subcarriers of narrowband frequencies and sends it over a wideband channel so it is and it it it, it is uh, it orthogonalizes these subcarriers so that they can be tightly packed in a wideband channel this is how we get an improvement in the spectral efficiency as we can see in this figure if you use a simple frequency division multiplexing they have a guard band in between and they do not overlap so it occupies a large bandwidth but if we compress these orthogonalize them and compress them we can save on a lot of bandwidth how we do that is discussed in the schematic model and as we can see here that they, they, they are required to be spaced optimally at a, dis at a distance of delta F such that the frequency, if, if we pick up a particular frequency, we could only get that particular signal and the other signal frequencies are nullified. Now OFDM MIMO, when coupled together, how they serve the purpose that we just talked about, how they 
support higher quality of service, how they support higher uh, bandwidth and data rate. So MIMO allows to transmit multiple information of streams in parallel over the wireless channel and they create physical fading channels. Whereas OFDM, it also transmits the uh, it also transmits multiple information streams in parallel, but it just gives us a notion as if there are several channels. But it essentially divides a wideband channel into separ several narrowband streams and sends the data through several subcarriers at different subcarrier frequencies. So now coming to the schematic model. Uh, understanding of this schematic model is quite important as it also helped me in uh, framing the code for simulation. So beginning at the first stage here we have D0, D1, D2 a serial stream of information bits and we feed it to the serial to parallel converter which basically multiplexes these signals and converts it into a parallel stream of data. So we have S0, S1 and Sn up to Sn-1 parallel streams of data which are then sent to a constellation mapper. So this is baseband signal, which is sent to a constellation mapper for modulation. The modulation may be BPSK, QPSK, or 16 uh, point modulation, anything. So in our case, in the simulation, we have used uh, a QPSK modulation technique. And as we can see right here, as an output of the constellation mapper, we get capital X0, capital X1, up to Xn minus one symbols. These symbols are now fed to the IFFT to convert it in the frequency domain and the IFFT block basically orthogonalizes it and sends it over the link after converting it in into a serial stream again. So this parallel to, and I'm sorry, uh, we also add the cyclic prefix here. So after, after the output of IFFT block, we get small x0, small x1 and up to small x n minus 1 symbols. And since they are orthogonal to each other, they are supposed to be compressed together. But in order to avoid intersymbol interference, we add something called a cyclic prefix, th which is shown here as X N capital X N N C P capital X N N C P minus one. The cyclic prefix basically work function as guard bands without occupying additional frequency, and they prevent intersymbol interference. So this completes the transmitter cycle, and when we uh, and they are sent across the wireless link through several multiple uh, antennas, as we saw in the MIMO configuration here, they are sent over several channels, several fading channels, and at the receiver end again, completely reverse process happens. So there is a serial to parallel converter again, which multiplexes these signals and converts them into parallel stream. Then there is. Uh, then we delete the cyclic prefix because the purpose of avoiding the interference is has been served already. We don't need the cyclic prefix now, so the cyclic prefix is deleted, and then we have uh, the small r zero, small r one up till small r n minus one signals. These are fed to the FFF uh, to the FFT block, and then subsequently to the frequency domain and again the constellation D mapper that is the D modulator. So as we can see here, instead of sending S Z instead of S0, S1 and S minus 1 that we had sent, we get S0 hat, S1 hat, and S n minus 1 hat. This denotes uh, this notation denotes that they are not the same. There have been a few bit errors in the transmission. So these two signals are different, and that is where we compute our uh, bit error rate from and analyze the performance. So with this background, I would like to move forward to the simulation results. So I had simulated uh, an, OFDM, uh, an OFDM MIMO system and plotted a BR versus EB by N0 graph to characterize the performance of this channel. We I had used basically QPSK modulation over an AWGN channel, thousand number of frames, and these are some parameters that uh, important parameters that I just used. Thousand number of frames and uh, 128 was the length of FFT. I had tested three different configurations for MIMO and we'll see how the results show uh, the performance of each of these configurations. So this graph that we see here first is the uh, BR versus EBN0, EB by N0 graph for a 2 cross 2 MIMO. As we can see, the error starts, the bit error rate starts to drop as we move forward in this, uh, towards this area of the, towards the left side of the, towards the right side of the graph, I'm sorry. So the bit error rate in reduces and if we see the results for a 4 cross 4 MIMO for the same, 
we can see that it performs a little better than the 2 cross 2 channel so the error rate here reduces compared to the 2 cross 2 channel and if we further increase for uh, the, the, the configuration into an 8 cross 8 MIMO what we see here is a little counterintuitive because uh, the black graph that we see here is for an 8 cross 8 MIMO and the bit error rate actually increases that is meaning to say that the performance is actually degraded this performance degradation happens because there is interference between ante different antennas on the transmission and receiver side so this is uh, th this is a problem and uh, if we we were to scale this system to for the 16 cross 16 or so on and so forth it is not it would not be possible because the interference just increases uh, beyond some some limit and the interference is uh, introduces the noise that is not acceptable so this So multiple access interference uh, in MIMO systems is a real problem and uh, it happens mainly because the multiple channels that are created in MIMO are not orthogonalized among themselves and uh, basically the antenna uh, it is because of the coupling effect between the antenna that we get this interference. So in order to solve this problem we implement space-time block codes and space-time block codes basically uh, orthogonalize the signals that are received on a MIMO channel. So uh, I would like to explain the LMOT space-time block code algorithm here because th that is one of the most efficient algorithms and that is what we've implemented. So considering a 2 cross 2 MIMO channel, in the first slot we would transmit C1 through to antenna 1 and C2 through antenna 2. In the second time slot we transmit C minus C2 star through antenna 1 and C1 through antenna 2 respectively. C1 and C C1 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 star and C2 star are basically the complex conjugates of C1 and C2. Now at the receiver end, when we pass this through a maximum ratio combiner, and uh, when it is decoded, what we get is a weighted sum of the signals, which is completely orthogonalized, and there is no interference. So it is interesting to see how uh, the bit error rate reduces in the simulation. And I move on to the simulation results now. So as we can see, the continuous lines uh, blue and red are of the 2 cross 2 and 4 cross 4 MIMO simulations without a uh, space-time block code implementation. And the dotted line here that we see is for with the space-time block code implementation. So as we can see towards th this end of the graph, the error reduces significantly and there is a huge uh, improvement in the performance. And this Alamuti space time block code works in a way that it is a, since it is a weighted sum the more number of antennas and receivers that we use the more better is the performance so conversely to the notion that we could not scale the MIMO systems earlier uh, using a Alamuti space time block code we can very well uh, scale these to higher configurations like a 16 cross 16 or a 32 cross 32 or even in the case of uh, massive MIMO systems where there are there is a large area of receivers and transmitters so to conclude the uh, simulation results of the project I would say that uh, as we saw earlier the simulation results showed that the combination of OFD and MIMO does work and uh, does show some performance improvement but it fails to reap the complete benefits of the technology because of the multiple access interference and uh, by using by use of space-time block codes effectively the interference is completely removed and there is a huge improvement in the performance so it is inevitable to use the space-time block codes and it is really important to use space-time block codes in order to uh, design a, a good OFD and MIMO system for future directives uh, uh, the current research work that or the thrust area and the research is uh, going towards the 5G and wide area IoT protocols and uh, multi-user multi, -u multi -user system and multi-antenna system are some configurations that are poised to uh, power these technology. So multi-user system is basically a differentiated QoS. Uh, uh, it, it offers differentiated quality of service to the users. So the users that are experiencing good channel condition receive the signals at a high bit rate, whereas the consumers receiving 
bad bad general conditions in, in the consumers in bad general conditions would receive a low bit rate so it basically uses the available bandwidth in a very efficient way but uh, it is really complex to design the systems and uh, a good amount of research is being done in this uh, in uh, to implement it in the millimeter wave uh, re, uh, millimeter wave uh, technology and it basically requires channel state information of the channel whether the channel conditions are good or bad it in it requires to feed this information at the mac layer so it is really challenging to design these systems and multi antenna system is basically use of multiple antennas to increase the diversity ratio and increase the reliability of the channel by sending the same signals through multiple antenna and thereby increasing the robustness uh, of the channel so with this i would like to end my ppt and uh, move on to the simulation results so this is the code for uh, OFDM simulation. I took help from the MathWorks documentation website. It is a very extensive documentation that they provide and the MATLAB's uh, and the uh, MathWorks communication toolbox is a very good way to uh, conveniently simulate these conditions. So this is a the this is the part of the code where I configure the uh, the kind of MIMO channel that we want to simulate. This is the OFD modulator demodulator. This is where the a AWGN channel was implemented and so on. So I, I'm s I would be simulating this for a thousand cycles and so this is the result for the simulation that we saw earlier in the presentation and moving on to the OFDM MIMO with state time block codes you would you would hold those previous results so that the results are superimposed and this is how we get the overall simulation so I would again like to emphasize on the point that implementation of the sp space time block codes has significantly improved the performance of the channel and this concludes the performance characterization and improvement of the wireless communication link using space time block codes the I, I'll also be submitting the report along uh, along with in the submission so the, the same concepts are defined and elaborated in a lot more detail in the report thank you